who was Francisco Goya. Francisco Goya y Lucienz, 1746-1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV. And painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800. Was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply. Disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya's series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. The sleep of reason produces monsters, an aquatint etching from the series. Depicts reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. While reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness. Including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814-1815. Which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820-1823, and many portraits. Who was Francisco Goya? Francisco Goya y Lucienz, 1746-1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV. And painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800. Was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply. Disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. The sleep of reason produces monsters, an aquatint etching from the series. Depicts reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. While reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness. Including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. 
Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814-1815, which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820-1823, and many portraits. What is a miniature painting? Particularly popular in Persian, Ottoman, and Mughal traditions, miniature paintings are small works on paper. Whether book illustrations or separate paintings kept in albums, known as a muraksa. Miniature paintings were not framed and not displayed on walls, but were meant to be held in one's hands. Miniature painting required years of training and apprenticeship to create. One of the most important centers of miniature painting was the Royal Herat School in Afghanistan, where students were instructed on painting and calligraphy. During the early 16th century, the school was moved to Tabriz, Iran. Miniature painters sat on the ground with one knee bent to support the painting board. Multiple layers of colors derived from pigments were applied, including gold, and then the painting was burnished. Who was seen in the grate? Seen in the grate, see. 1489-1588, whose full name was Coca Mimar Sinan Aga. Was arguably the most famous architect in Islamic history, designing over 300 buildings. Including the Mosque of Salim II, which is considered his masterpiece. Also known as the Salimi Yi Mosque. The Mosque of Salim II was built between 1569 and 1575 in Edirne, Turkey. Sinan designed it when he was almost 80 years old. And his goal was to surpass the great architecture of the previous Byzantine Empire. He created a larger dome than that of the Hagia Sophia from base to crown. The building's interior is a masterwork of mathematical proportion and geometry. Fusing an octagon with a dome-covered square, with four half-domes in each corner. Who was Dominicus Zimmerman? Dominicus Zimmermann, 1685-1766, was a German architect from Bavaria, who is famous for his 1757 design of Die Weiss, a Bavarian pilgrimage church whose name means the meadow. Located in the foothills of the Alps, Die Weiss is one of the best examples of Rococo design in the 18th century. While the exterior of the church is relatively plain and simple, the church awes the visitor upon entering, evoking a feeling of heaven. Overwhelmingly rich frescoes cover the walls and ceilings. 
and blend in with sculpture and stucco decoration. Trained to work in stucco, Zimmermann designed other important 18th century churches in Germany. Including Wallfahrtskirche, the pilgrimage church in Steinhausen. And the Frauenkirche, Church of Our Lady, in Gunsberg. Did Chinese painting change during the Qing dynasty? The Qing dynasty was a Manchurian imperial power that ousted the previous. Ming rulers and controlled China from 1644 to 1911. For many Chinese. Especially Ming loyalists, this political shift was dramatic and frightening. However, although the Manchurians were a foreign power, they adopted many Chinese art traditions favored by the Ming. Multiple schools of painting developed during the Qing era, including the Orthodox school. Which drew inspiration from the earlier literati painters and the individualist school. Individualist painters focused on expressing their personal feelings during the tumultuous time of the Qing takeover. Leading painters of the era included Shi Tao, 1642 to 1707. An individualist painter who traced his ancestry to the first Ming Emperor. When the Qing took over Beijing, he fled and went into hiding, and then became a Chan Buddhist monk. He wrote extensively on art theory, including his most well known tract Sayings on Painting from Monk Bitter Gourd, which espoused the significance of the single brush stroke. His work balances expressive energy with soft tones and is notable for its tendency toward abstraction and use of negative space to create a sense of depth. Shi Tao was one of the most famous individualist painters because of his innovative manipulations of traditional forms of Chinese painting. How can El Greco's paintings appear so modern? To some, the paintings of El Greco appear more closely related to 19th century Impressionism or 20th century Expressionism than the 16th century Spanish styles of nearly 500 years earlier. His work is characterized by loose brush strokes, often ghostly, elongated figures, and a use of colors in line with the Mannerists. El Greco's real name was Domnikos Theodokopoulos and El Greco means the Greek in Spanish. Born in Crete in 1541, he worked in Italy before arriving in Toledo, Spain. With the unfulfilled goal of becoming an artist in the court of Philip II. Although the king didn't favor El Greco, he did find many other patrons. His 1586 painting The Burial of Count Orgaz depicts the soul of the dead count as it rises to heaven. Accompanied by an angel, and surrounded by an audience of saints holy figures, and well-known individuals from Toledo. The figures are pale, ghostly, and white. Which contrasts with the bright yellows worn by the clergy and the red fabrics worn by the Virgin Mary in heaven. 
The painting is arguably similar in style to Italian Mannerists such as Pontormo. And El Greco is considered by some to be a Mannerist painter. What is Romanticism? Romanticism was an intellectual, cultural, and artistic movement that went against the rationalism of the Enlightenment and instead emphasized emotion and subjectivity. Romanticism developed in the mid-18th century and remained popular until well into the mid-19th century. It coincided with neoclassicism, and some neoclassical art is even considered romantic. Because of its frequent idealism and nostalgia for the past. During the Romantic period, there was a new interest in medieval literature, art, and architecture. Inspiring Gothic Revival, which was particularly popular in British domestic architecture. Romanticism transcends the visual arts and includes music and literature as well. Both Beethoven and Chopin are considered part of the Romantic movement. As are Victor Hugo, William Wordsworth, Herman Melville, and Edgar Allan Poe. Romantic painters include Thomas Gainsborough, William Blake, Francisco Goya. Theodore Gericault, Eugene Delacroix, Jean Augusta Dominique Angra, John Constable. Joseph Mallard William Turner, and the artists of the Hudson River School, among others. Who was William Blake? William Blake 1757 to 1824, was a deeply religious English printmaker, painter, and poet who disliked the formal training of the Royal Academy and spent his career working on highly imaginative projects, including a series of prophetic books modeled after the Bible, which he wrote and illuminated. Blake did not believe in drawing from life and naturalism was not his goal. He drew on his imagination for visual cues and his works are complex, thematic, and often influenced by the style of medieval manuscripts. He created his own mythology that included characters such as Eurizen, a name derived from the phrase, your reason, who embodies rationality. In one of his most enduring images, The Ancient of Days, 1794, which is also often called God creating the universe, Blake blends the styles of Michelangelo with medieval iconography to depict the bearded figure of Urizen reaching down from the clouds his open hand extending into the form of a compass that glows with yellow light from heaven. While Michelangelo's images of God are graceful and all-powerful, Blake conceived of Urizen as a complex negative force, and his The Ancient of Days is bathed in deep red and dark tones. William Blake's art was not particularly well received during his lifetime but garnered much critical attention about a century after his death. He is no considered one of the most important English artists in history a significant romantic artist who felt dissatisfied with the promises of the Enlightenment and the values of neoclassicism.
What is El Escorial? El Escorial is an enormous monastery palace built by Spanish King Philip II in Madrid between 1563 and 1584 Philip II took over control of Spain after his father, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, abdicated. Philip was therefore one of the most powerful rulers in Europe. Controlling territories in Spain, the Netherlands, Milan, Burgundy, Naples, and even the Americas. Philip II was a devout Catholic and El Escorial combined a seminary, convent, and basilica with the royal palace. The main architect was Juan Bautista de Toledo until his death. When Juan de Herrera took over, eventually completing the project. The building design is reminiscent of Italian classicism. But it is formidable and severe, reflecting the power of the Spanish crown. What is the difference between Baroque and Rococo? The difference between Baroque and Rococo art can be fairly confusing and even art historians aren't exactly sure where to draw the line, some even consider Rococo to be an ornate subcategory of Baroque. In general, Baroque is thought of as more rigid than Rococo. For example, compare the architectural style of Versailles with the Würzburg residence in southern Germany which features gold-painted capitals and pastel-colored ceiling paintings. Rococo art is, overall, less religious than Baroque paintings, with a tendency towards images of parties, idealized landscapes, and romantic engagements. Whereas Baroque artists favored religious symbolism, biblical scenes, and monumental mythological paintings, Color choice is another way to tell the difference, Baroque paintings, in the manner of Caravaggio. Emphasize chiaroscuro and bold, rich colors. While Rococo paintings are brightly illuminated and feature powdery pinks, light greens, and other pastels. Who was Francisco Goya? Francisco Goya y Lucienz, 1746-1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya, who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV, and painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800, was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply. Disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. 
The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, an Aquatint etching from the series. Depicts Reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. While Reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness. Including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814 to 1815, which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820 to 1823, and many portraits. What is a tea ceremony? The traditional tea ceremony began in China, but became extremely popular in Japan. Especially during the Momoyama period, 1573 to 1615. The tea ceremony was known as Chanwoyu, which literally translates to hot water for tea. These ceremonies were held in the tea houses, or hashitsu. Of castles and palaces made of simple materials such as unfinished bamboo. The Japanese tea ceremony is very quiet and can last as long as four hours. Rules dictating movement and speech are linked to the purposeful actions of Buddhist meditation. In a way, the tea ceremony is like theater, or performed poetry. In which social etiquette is elevated to religious ritual and participants are immersed in thoughts of social harmony. Humility, peace with nature, and a distance from the artificiality of the material world. What is Islamic tile work? Islamic art has a long tradition of decorative tile work, which was used to decorate the walls and other surfaces. Both interior and exterior, of important buildings such as mosques and palaces. The 16th and 17th centuries were considered to be a golden age of Islamic tile work. Tile mosaics, in which glass or ceramic are organized into decorative patterns and then plastered, was one very popular technique. Another was known as dry cord tile work, also known as cure da seca. First popularized in Spain during Umayyad rule. This process relies on large pieces of multicolored tiles. Rather than smaller, individually colored fragments. Buildings such as the Imam Mosque to Isfahan, Iran. Are covered in intricately patterned tiles in astonishing geometric and abstract forms. Who was Benjamin West? Benjamin West, 1738-1820, was an American-born painter who studied in Philadelphia and Rome before establishing a successful career as a history painter in London, 
making him the first American artist. With such a successful international career, he even served as president of the British Royal Academy of Art after Joshua Reynolds. And was financially supported by a powerful patron, King George III. West's historical paintings strongly adhered to neoclassical conventions, however, in a surprising change from tradition. West's The Death of General Wolfe, 1770, depicted contemporary, rather than historical events. And included images of the king's army wearing their contemporary uniforms, not ancient dress. Although the king, and Joshua Reynolds, aggressively disliked this change. It proved extremely popular amongst the public. The king changed his tune, and named West the royal history painter. What is the art of Benin? Benin, also known as the Edo Empire, was an important African state that lasted from 1440 to 1897. The heart of the empire. Benin City, was located about 150 miles away from Isle Ife in Nigeria. Similar to Isle Ife, Benin had a long tradition of memorial. Sculpture and shrines were built in honor of deceased obas, or kings. Popular materials for sculpture included ivory and bronze, and it is partly because of the use of these. Durable materials that more art from Benin has survived than from other African cultures from this time period. The power of the Edo Empire peaked in the 16th century and succumbed to the British Empire towards the end of the 19th century. Many of Benin's art treasures are now part of the British Museum and other Western institutions. Who was Sir Baran? Like Velázquez, Francisco de Zerberan, 1598-1664, was influenced by Caravaggio and is known for his powerful paintings of saints and martyrs, as well as his highly realistic still lives. One of Zerberan's most powerful paintings is Saint Serapion, 1628 which depicts the deceased saint after he sacrificed himself in exchange for captives held by the Moors. Against an inky black background, the saint's body is illuminated, leaning forward against his restraints. Powerful light reflects off of his long white robes, which look incredibly real. A similar contrast of light and dark is evident in another painting Agnes Dei, c. 1635-1640, in which a white lamb dominates the picture plane, its feet tied in a suggestion of sacrifice. The simplicity of Zur Baron's images belies moving spiritual connotations and profound visual impact. Who was Bilzid? Kamal al Din Bilzid, referred to simply as Bilzid, was one of the most famous Persian manuscript painters during the 15th century. 
He was born around 1450 in the city of Herat, in modern-day Afghanistan. He worked for royal courts under both Timurid and Seyfavid rule. The Timurid rulers descended from Genghis Khan, and were succeeded by the Safavids as rulers of Iran. Bihazid's paintings are characterized by vivid color, dynamic detail, and warping perspective. His work notably includes representations of figures. Something more common in Persian and Indian painting than other Islamic art. One of Bihazid's most famous miniature paintings is Seduction of Yusuf, c. 1488, a story included in both the Bible and the Quran. In the story, Yusuf, Joseph, is seduced by Zalaikha, the wife of Potiphar. According to the Persian version of the tale, Zalaikha led Yusuf through seven rooms of her palace, locking the door of each room behind her. In the final room, she propositioned Yusuf. But he was able to escape when the doors were miraculously unlocked. In the painting, zigzagging beige panels contain the actual Arabic text of the story at the top, bottom, and in the middle of the manuscript page. Zalaikha's palace is made up of intricately decorated Multicolored panels connected by angled, polygonal staircases. This geometric, two-dimensional painting gives the illusion of three-dimensional space and is a masterpiece of Persian manuscript painting. What was the Ottoman Empire? The Ottoman Empire was a Turkish state founded in the 13th century by Osman I, who then expanded his territories, eventually dislodging Byzantine rulers and taking over Constantinople in 1453. Constantinople, now called Istanbul, became the capital of the Ottoman Empire which by the 15th century controlled large portions of North Africa, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire was one of the longest-lasting powers in history. Only falling in 1922 when Turkey became a republic. What was the Gothic Revival? Also known as the Neo-Gothic Movement, the Gothic Revival was an 18th hand. 19th century architectural movement characterized by the revival of medieval style and coincided with the increased popularity of medieval literature and poetry. A good example of Gothic Revival architecture is Strawberry Hill. The private home of Horace Walpole, 1717-1797, in Twickenham, England. Walpole's home design included round turrets topped with crenellated battlements. Tooth-like notches used for defense in medieval buildings. And pointed arch tracery windows similar to those found in French Gothic cathedrals. Another example of Gothic Revival architecture is the Palace of Westminster in London. Which was rebuilt after a fire in 1834. Gothic Revival architecture was a popular style. 
for universities both in Europe and the United States, including the University of Glasgow. The University of Chicago, and the City College of New York, among many others. What is picturesque? Though the literal meaning of picturesque is like a picture. The term refers to the aesthetically pleasing qualities of a painting that come from texture. Lighting, composition, and engaging formal irregularities. During the 18th century, British painters found the 17th century landscapes of artists such as Nicholas Poussa and Jacob Van Ruisdael to exemplify the picturesque due to their subtlety and mystery. So inspired, British architects even designed gardens after landscape paintings. And during the 19th century, Britain saw a surge in domestic tourism to such picturesque locations as the Lake District and the Scottish Highlands, which were made popular by romantic poets such as William Wordsworth and Sir Walter Scott. What is Rococo? Rococo is a distinctive style of art, architecture, literature, music and more, popular during the 18th century in Europe. The name comes from French, and is a blend of the word stones and shells. Both popular items in 18th century gardens. Like many other terms such as Gothic and Baroque, the term was created much later and used to disparagingly describe what 19th century critics considered the gaudy, bad taste of the 18th century. Rococo architecture is highly ornate, and characterized by curving. Rather than rigid forms, pastel colors, and an element of fantasy or whimsy. Painting also features pastel colors and witty, frivolous scenes of aristocratic lovers and mythological figures. Though there are occasionally cynical undertones in some Rococo paintings. For example in the prints and paintings of William Hogarth. Rococo first developed as a cohesive style in Paris and is specifically associated with the French King Louis XV and the rise of the bourgeois, or upper middle class. As with other categories of art, regional differences lead to variation of Rococo style. Important Rococo painters include Jean-Antoine Watteau, jean Honor Fragonar, and Johann Balthasar Newman, among others. How are the landscapes of Constable and Turner different? John Constable, 1776-1837, and Joseph Mallard William Turner, 1776-1851, were both successful British landscape painters and yet their styles and approaches to nature were almost completely opposite. After spending some time training at the Royal Academy School in London, but disliking academic convention, Constable dedicated himself to studying nature and searching for truth in his home village of East Holt, in the Suffolk countryside. 
In an attempt to garner respect for landscape painting, Constable's canvases were very large. His painting, The Haywain, Landscape, Noon, 1821, is over six feet long, for example. His paintings are clear, detailed, and infused with emotion. Which is expressed in heavy clouds, reflective ponds, and glistening foliage. Usually calm and pristine. Constable's landscapes offer a subjective image of the manicured English countryside. By comparison, Turner's landscapes are a whirlwind of drama and dissolved images. And present nature as an overwhelming power capable of consuming man and his impermanent structures. Turner is known for his enormous oil paintings, as well as innovations in watercolor. Particularly the borderline abstraction of his sweeping brush strokes. Turner's paintings were shocking at the time. His 1842 painting Snowstorm, Steamer Off a Harbor's Mouth, for example, depicts a ferocious ocean storm within with the actual steamer is barely visible. And it is nearly impossible to differentiate between the swirl of dark clouds and the thrusts of the thrashing waves. Unlike Constable's careful, controlled nature, Turner's is a monster. Who was Suleiman the Magnificent? Suleiman I, known as Suleiman the Magnificent, 1494 to 1566. Ruled the Ottoman Empire from 1520 until his death. He was trained as a goldsmith and was a great patron of the arts. Under his rule, ceramics, calligraphy, manuscript illumination, metal working, textiles, and architecture flourished. Suleiman supported a royal painting society, the Nakashkane, whose styles greatly influenced other artists throughout the Ottoman Empire. A good example of the Nakashkane style is in their design. For the Sultan's imperial signature, known as a Tughra, it features bold, sweeping lines and ornate organic decoration done in ink and watercolor on paper. It incorporates both abstract design and calligraphy. And includes the name of the Sultan as well as the phrase the eternally victorious. What are some significant examples of 18th century neoclassical architecture? Chiswick House designed and built between 1724 and 1729 by Robert Boyle. The third Earl of Burlington in West London, England. Greatly inspired by the architect Palladio and his Villa Rotunda. Chiswick House features an octagonal dome and a large but simple portico with an empty pediment. The overall style is restrained, flat, and symmetrical. Pulteney Bridge designed by celebrated Scottish architect, Robert Adam, 1728-1792. Who also designed great buildings such as the Edinburgh City Chambers and Colzean Castle in Ayrshire, Scotland. The unique, Palladian-style Pulteney Bridge. 
completed in 1773, crosses the River Avon in Bath, England, and is lined with shops. Theatre de Elodian originally called the Theatre Francais. This austere neoclassical building was designed by Marie-Joseph Payer between 1767 to 1770. Almost completely void of decoration. The portico features columns of the simplest Tuscan order and has no pediment. The building emphasizes its horizontality and geometric symmetry. Monticello designed by Virginia Statements and author of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, as his private residence in Charlottesville between 1769 and 1782. With later redesigns between 1796 and 1908, Jefferson was interested in developing a uniquely American style of architecture that would promote patriotism and help to form the new country's national identity. What was the Sulhaik movement? The Silhaik movement was a Korean style of painting that developed during the 18th century and was inspired by a newfound focus on Korean identity and Confucianism. Chong Sun, 1676-1759, was a celebrated Korean painter and was a leading member of the Silhaik movement. He was active during the middle of the Joseon dynasty which lasted from 1392 until 1910 and had its capital at Seoul, now the capital of South Korea. Chong Sun was inspired by Chinese literati painting and is known for his ink paintings of mountain scenes. Especially paintings of the Diamond Mountains, which he made with dark, textured brush strokes. Like the literati painters, Chong Sun was interested in capturing a true view or realistic depiction of the natural world. What is a fate galante? A fate galante is a type of Rococo painting that depicts aristocrats engaging in a small, elegant party. Usually in a beautiful outdoor location, and often involving some kind of amorous, if not erotic activities. This type of painting was first introduced by Jean Antoine Watteau in the early 18th century. And his work, A Pilgrimage to Scythera, 1717, is a good example. The mythical island of Scythera is the location of the birth of Aphrodite, who was formed by sea foam. To the far right, a statue of Aphrodite, also known as Venus, is decorated with flowers. Just below, a group of dreamy, well-dressed aristocrats hold hands and sit close. Some embracing, in an apparent homage to the Greek goddess of love. Further to the left, a fairy, shaped like a scallop shell and draped with a pink cloth, waits to take the reluctant visitors off the island. Pink cherubs float overhead and the sky is tinged with the color of sunset. Watto's painting reflects the Rococo style with its silky, powdery texture, amorous themes, and aristocratic focus. With a pilgrimage to Scythera, Watto created an entirely new category of painting, the Fate Galante.
What is Jasperware? Developed by the English potter Josiah Wedgwood, Jasperware is a type of porcelain best known for its popular white on blue. Unglazed finish, though various other colors were also used, and neoclassical design. Wedgwood hired sculptor John Flaxman to recreate highly popular molded relief images. That closely mimicked ancient Greek vase designs, which had been recently discovered. Jasperware was effectively marketed and manufactured on a large scale. Making Wedgwood's neoclassical designs available to a wider public than decorative objects made before the Industrial Revolution. Jasperware, and Wedgwood pottery as a whole, remain very popular to this day. What are the sappy salt cellars? Sappy salt cellars, made of ivory, were a result of Portuguese trade relationships with artists along the coast of West Africa. The Portuguese commissioned luxury goods such as spoons, forks, decorative boxes, and salt cellars. At the time, salt was itself a luxury good that only the rich could afford. And an exotic, carved salt cellar was a symbol of wealth. Art historians have identified what they think are three. Individual sappy carvers who produced much of the work. The styles of the salt cellars are a blend of African and Portuguese influence. Mixing Christian imagery and European hunting scenes with royal iconography familiar within the Benin art historical tradition. In a way, the sappy salt cellars are the first example of tourist art in Africa. As these were objects created with the intention of exporting them. Who was Angelica Kaufman? Angelica Kaufman, 1741-1807, was an important neoclassical artist in Britain who studied in Rome. Became friends with Joshua Reynolds, and co-founded the Royal Academy of Arts in 1768, though. She was forbidden to study the male nude, a fundamental part of academic training to this day. Despite this, Kaufman painted history paintings, which were held in higher regard than any other form of painting. And was the only 18th century woman artist to do so. Kaufman produced Rococoesque, neoclassical history paintings, including Ariadne abandoned by Theseus. 1774, A Sleeping Nymph Watched by a Shepherd, 1780, and Cornelia presenting her children as her treasures, c. 1785, which tells a story in the life of one of the most powerful women in ancient Rome. Many of her paintings were reproduced as prints. And she had great success as a portraitist for aristocratic patrons. Who was Jacques Louis David? Jacques-Louis David, 1748-1825, to 1825, 
was arguably the most important French painter working in the neoclassical style. Whose art first exemplified the values of the French Revolution? And then the imperial style of Emperor Napoleon. In his history paintings, such as The Oath of the Horatii, 1784, David depicted patriotic Roman scenes, which emphasized themes of sacrifice and heroism, and captured the spirit of the revolution. His 1793 painting, The Death of Marat, which was commissioned during the bloody reign of terror, commemorates the bloody death of Jean-Pierre Marat, a Jacobin journalist and politician murdered while in the bathtub by a woman aligned with the Girondins, an opposing political faction. Marat was known to have a debilitating skin disease, and often worked while soaking in the bathtub. The painting idealizes Marat, whose body slumps over the edge of the tub, which is presented in a minimalist fashion against a simple bathroom. Quite unlike Marat's real bathroom, which was rather more opulent. In his left hand, Marat still holds a handwritten note, while in his right hand, a quill. Nearby is the bloody knife that the assassin, Charlotte Corday had used to stab him through the chest. David belonged to the same political party as Marat, and this painting clearly serves as political propaganda. Once the revolution was over, David's political fortunes rose and fell. He served a short time in prison, and then as the president. But, he eventually aligned himself with a new power, Napoleon Bonaparte. Who ruled over France from 1804 to 1815, and became an important patron for David. What is Murillo's Immaculate Conception? Bartolomé Esteban Murillo, 1617-1682, was an important Spanish painter based in Seville whose art emphasized images of the Virgin Mary and the Saints, and was painted according to rules set out by the leaders of the Catholic Counter-Reformation, which specified the manner in which the Virgin Mary could be depicted. Murillo painted multiple different paintings of the Immaculate Conception including the Immaculate Conception of the Escorial, c. 1678, which conforms to these rules. The Immaculate Conception is a Catholic doctrine, not fully accepted as dogma until the 19th century. Stating that the Virgin Mary was born without original sin. In Murillo's painting, Mary is clothed in blue and white and she appears suspended in a glowing heavenly space surrounded by cherubic angels. Her face looks upward, her hands are held in prayer, and her feet gingerly rest upon a delicate crescent moon. An image derived from Revelation 12 colon 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, as quoted in Janssen 696. The delicate sweetness of Murillo's paintings influenced Spanish painters in the New World for nearly 200 years. How was the Hagia Sophia converted to a mosque?
when the Ottoman Turks took control over the former Byzantine Empire, the Hagia Sophia, which had been built as a cathedral by Emperor Justinian in the 6th century, was converted into a mosque. The conversion of the Hagia Sophia was an important symbol of power for the conquering ruler, Sultan Mehmet II. Many of the Byzantine mosaics were covered in plaster and certain elements, such as the altar, were removed. Elements of Islamic architecture were incorporated into the building, such as the mirab, a niche that indicates the direction of Mecca for prayer, as well as the large minarets outside. In the 20th century, the Hagia Sophia became a public museum. And many of the Byzantine mosaics were restored. How did Korean art change during the Choson period? The Choson dynasty lasted in Korea from 1392 until 1910, when Japan annexed the country. During this very long period, Korean art was heavily influenced by Chinese art styles and ideas. But a specifically Korean, often secular, style of art slowly developed. For example, the artist, Kim Hongdu, 1745 c. 1814, was known for his lively genre paintings that captured a sense of daily life in 18th and early 19th century Korea. His paintings often depicted people engaging in normal activities such as studying at school or sports activities like wrestling. He is known for a painting called Schoolroom, c. 1814, which shows a young student bursting into tears when he doesn't understand his lesson. The schoolmaster, wearing a rectangular hat and a beard, looks distracted and unsure of how to proceed with the lesson. What is a painted screen? In Japan, painted folding screens, called biobu, were popular in the imperial houses of the elite military rulers of the Momoyama period. While many of these castles and houses no longer exist, 17th century screens made by the Kano family remain. Compared to Western standards, 17th century Japanese houses were very empty. With no furniture or decorative trinkets filling interior spaces. Instead, movable screens were painted in bold colors. Often depicting nature, landscapes, and genre scenes. Painted screens by the Kano family include Cypress Tree, an eight-fold work attributed to Kano Itoku, 1543-1590, which was originally used as a sliding door. The artist emphasized the texture of the bark of the tree while simplifying the background which serves to monumentalize the tree and evoke the vastness of nature. What is the Würzburg residence?
The Würzburg residence is an important example of Rococo architecture in Germany designed by Johann Balthasar Neumann. 1687-1744, for the Prince Bishop of Würzburg, a member of the Schönborn family. The Kaisersaal, or Imperial Hall, of the residence has a gold, white, and pastel color scheme and emphasizes curves and elaborate ornamentation, including marble columns and undulating moldings. A grand staircase expands to over 600 square feet. Its balustrades and banisters decorated with statues and Greek vases. Above the sprawling stairs, the Italian Rococo artist Giovanni Tipolo painted what is believed to be the largest ceiling fresco in the world. It depicts the Prince Bishop with the Greek god Apollo, along with images of the seasons, the zodiac, and the four known continents of the world, all symbolizing the wide-reaching power of the Skonborn family. What is the sublime? During the 18th century, philosophers established three different categories of aesthetics. The beautiful, the picturesque, and the sublime. In 1763, Immanuel Kant, philosopher of the German Enlightenment wrote observations on the feeling of the beautiful and sublime, and in this treatise, he described beauty as relating to formal harmony, while the sublime related to intangible awe and a feeling of being overwhelmed. Edward Burke explained the concept of the sublime in the philosophical inquiry into the Origin of Our Ideas of the Sublime and Beautiful, 1957, when he wrote Whatever is fitted in any sort to excite the ideas of pain, and danger, that is to say Whatever is in any sort terrible, is the source of the sublime, as quoted in Pierce 93 An interest in the grandeur and vastness of the aesthetic experience the concept of the sublime mirrored the values and interests of the romantic movement emphasizing emotion, mystery, and the imagination. What is the Queen Mother Pendant Mask? The Queen Mother Pendant Mask likely represents Idia, the mother of Oba Isaji, who ruled Benin between 1504 and 1550. Nearly 10 inches tall, it is made of carved ivory and was meant to be worn at the hip. The face of Idia is skillfully carved in a highly naturalistic style, with powerful eyes and stylized hair. Along the top and bottom of the mask are carved images of Portuguese soldiers, with whom Benin had an amicable trade relationship. The solider images alternate with images of the mudfish, which was symbolic of wealth, creativity, and the sea. A second, nearly identical, pendant mask was also carved from the same piece of ivory. One is in the British Museum while the other is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. What is the raft of the Medusa? Like Goya's 3rd of May, 
1808, another early 19th century painting. The Raft of the Medusa, 1819, by French Romantic painter Theodore Giracault, 1791-1824. Emphasizes the pain and suffering of victims amidst seemingly insurmountable odds. The Raft of the Medusa is a great contemporary history painting that depicts a horrible accident at sea when a ship filled with French colonists ran aground. There were not enough lifeboats for all aboard. And so a barely floating lifeboat was built for the 152 seamen, which was eventually cut from the main lifeboat by the captain and the officers and left floating at sea. Thirteen days later, only 15 suffering passengers remained on. The raft after withstanding disease, starvation, and cannibalism. The story caused a sensation in France, as it was discovered that the captain of the ship was an inexperienced aristocrat who was made captain through corruption. Jericuel depicts the raft as the passengers spot a passing ship, their first hope at rescue. Twisted yet idealized bodies, some dead are sprawled over the surface of the tiny wood raft while the dark, foreboding ocean looms along the horizon. The viewer's eye is brought upwards, as the raft is raised on the swell of a wave. To the outstretched arm of a frantic passenger waving a tattered red cloth, trying to get attention. The raft of the Medusa incorporates romantic perceptions of nature with a sense of heroism adventure, and injustice. What is the Raft of the Medusa? Like Goya's 3rd of May, 1808, another early 19th century painting. The Raft of the Medusa, 1819, by French Romantic painter Theodore Giracault, 1791-1824. Emphasizes the pain and suffering of victims amidst seemingly insurmountable odds. The Raft of the Medusa is a great contemporary history painting that depicts a horrible accident at sea when a ship filled with French colonists ran aground. There were not enough lifeboats for all aboard. And so a barely floating lifeboat was built for the 152 seamen, which was eventually cut from the main lifeboat by the captain and the officers and left floating at sea. Thirteen days later, only 15 suffering passengers remained on. The raft after withstanding disease, starvation, and cannibalism. The story caused a sensation in France, as it was discovered that the captain of the ship was an inexperienced aristocrat who was made captain through corruption. Jericuel depicts the raft as the passengers spot a passing ship, their first hope at rescue. Twisted yet idealized bodies, some dead, are sprawled over the surface of the tiny wood raft while the dark, foreboding ocean looms along the horizon. The viewer's eye is brought upwards, as the raft is raised on the swell of a wave. To the outstretched arm of a frantic passenger waving a tattered red cloth, trying to get attention. The Raft of the Medusa incorporates romantic perceptions of nature with a sense of heroism, adventure, 
and injustice. Who was Eugene Delacroix? Eugene Delacroix, 1798-1863 Was not interested in the defined forms and classical stoicism promoted by the Academy. This French romantic painter is known for his use of thick brush strokes, and sweeping. Dramatic scenes inspired by mythology, current events, and his trips to North Africa. Delacroix's massacre at Chios, 1822-1824, was based on the Greek struggle for independence from the Ottoman Empire. An event that influenced many romantic writers and artists. The painting communicates sympathy for the exhausted Greeks by focusing on the details of individual faces. A menacing Turk dominates the scene as his dark horses rears up over the group of victims. Similarly, Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, July 28, 1830, 1830, makes heroes of unlikely revolutionaries who passionately take up arms as their brethren have fallen, ready to overthrow the monarchy. Red, white, and blue the colors of the French flag draw attention to the female personification of liberty. Whose bare breast recalls classic sculpture, as she emerges from the dust and smoke. She holds up the French flag in one hand and a bayonet in the other. Leading the revolutionaries into battle. This romantic painting emphasizes idealism and heroism in its depiction of an important historical event. Who was Eugene Delacroix? Eugene Delacroix 1798-1863 Was not interested in the defined forms and classical stoicism promoted by the Academy. This French romantic painter is known for his use of thick brush strokes, and sweeping. Dramatic scenes inspired by mythology, current events, and his trips to North Africa. Delacroix's massacre at Chios, 1822-1824, was based on the Greek struggle for independence from the Ottoman Empire. An event that influenced many romantic writers and artists. The painting communicates sympathy for the exhausted Greeks by focusing on the details of individual faces. A menacing Turk dominates the scene as his dark horses rears up over the group of victims. Similarly, Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, July 28, 1830, 1830, makes heroes of unlikely revolutionaries who passionately take up arms as their brethren have fallen, ready to overthrow the monarchy. Red, white, and blue the colors of the French flag draw attention to the female personification of liberty. Whose bare breast recalls classic sculpture, as she emerges from the dust and smoke. She holds up the French flag in one hand and a bayonet in the other. Leading the revolutionaries into battle. This romantic painting emphasizes idealism and heroism in its depiction of an important historical event. Who was Jean Augusta Dominique Angra?
The Art of French Painter Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra 1780-1867, exhibits a curious combination of neoclassical and romantic values, though he was determined to hold on to traditional neoclassical values and was considered a nemesis of the much looser Delacroix. He was inspired by the Renaissance painting of Raphael. As well as the revolutionary artist, Jacques Louis David. While interested in history painting, Angra is better known for his sensual portraits of female nudes. Especially paintings such as La Grande Odalisque, 1814, which depicts a sultan's concubine reclined languidly on luxurious, colorful fabrics. La Grande Odalisque is an example of Orientalism or a romantic interest in the exotic East. In the painting, the elongated form of the concubine, along with objects of Eastern luxury, such as a fan made of peacock feathers and ornate jewelry, were decidedly romantic. Despite anger preference for neoclassicism and apparent distaste for portraiture, Who was Jean Augusta Dominique Angra? The Art of French Painter Jean Augusta Dominique Angra 1780 1867 exhibits a curious combination of neoclassical and romantic values, though he was determined to hold on to traditional neoclassical values and was considered a nemesis of the much looser Delacroix. He was inspired by the Renaissance painting of Raphael. As well as the revolutionary artist, Jacques-Louis David. While interested in history painting, Angra is better known for his sensual portraits of female nudes. Especially paintings such as La Grande Odalisque, 1814, which depicts a sultan's concubine reclined languidly on luxurious, colorful fabrics. La Grande Odalisque is an example of Orientalism, or a romantic interest in the exotic East. In the painting, the elongated form of the concubine, along with objects of Eastern luxury, such as a fan made of peacock feathers and ornate jewelry, were decidedly romantic. Despite anger preference for neoclassicism and apparent distaste for portraiture, How did the art of Spain influence art in the New World? Starting in the 16th century, Spanish culture began to dominate Central and South America as Spanish conquerors destroyed native temples and missionaries worked to convert native populations to Catholicism, sometimes forcefully. By the 18th century, Catholicism in Latin America had become infused with native beliefs, which directly inspired new styles of art and architecture. An example of this fusion can be seen in the nearly 12-foot-tall atrial cross from the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City, which was made sometime before the 1560s. This large, stone crucifix was hung in the church's atrium and was decorated by native artists commissioned by Christian missionaries. 
the cross decoration blends images associated with Christ. Such as the crown of thorns and the holy shroud, with Central American symbols of the tree of life. The atrial cross was a common decoration in parts of the church where new native converts were introduced to Catholicism, and the decoration of the cross at Guadalupe underscores its function as a visual marriage of cultures and beliefs. How did the art of Spain influence art in the New World? Starting in the 16th century, Spanish culture began to dominate Central and South America as Spanish conquerors destroyed native temples and missionaries. Work to convert native populations to Catholicism, sometimes forcefully. By the 18th century, Catholicism in Latin America had become infused with native beliefs, which directly inspired new styles of art and architecture. An example of this fusion can be seen in the nearly 12 foot tall atrial cross from the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City, which was made sometime before the 1560s. This large, stone crucifix was hung in the church's atrium and was decorated by native artists commissioned by Christian missionaries. The cross decoration blends images associated with Christ such as the crown of thorns and the holy shroud, with Central American symbols of the tree of life. The atrial cross was a common decoration in parts of the church where new native converts were introduced to Catholicism, and the decoration of the cross at Guadalupe underscores its function as a visual marriage of cultures and beliefs.